Hey, welcome everybody. We're here today with another discussion about aviation aerospace, and I have some experts with me today. I have Stan Springer and Aaron Larson. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you today? Doing great, thanks. Very good. Hey, um, uh, these gentlemen are, are subject matter experts in the area of eVTOLs and unmanned aircraft systems, UASs and drones, and there's been a lot of excitement, a lot of companies that are entering into this space these days, and today we're going to talk about that and some interesting things, you know, really that pertain to that. Um, I'm going to start with Stan, who works with a company called Delmar Aerospace. Stan, can you tell us who Delmar Aerospace is? Sure, we're a defense and commercial services provider as well as technology innovator in the unmanned space, uh, but also unmanned as well. Um, uh, aerospace is in our blood and uh, we do a little bit of everything, but uh, we got started in unmanned and uh, we love it. Excellent. Well, let me kick off our questions with a question for you. Um, what are the innovations or what are the trends that are happening today within this space? You know, it, it's amazing. Uh, the unmanned space is uh, still innovating after all of these years. And I've been in the industry since 2006. And it's incredible where you're seeing the industry mature while at the same time you're still, still seeing a lot of innovation. So the trends I'm seeing overall, they're affecting whether or not a, a firm is successful. First of all, the regulatory environment's closing. It's becoming tighter and it's becoming a, a little bit more mature. The other piece is it's investor rationalization. The days of a cocktail napkin uh, design, getting a million dollars with nothing much more than that is kind of going away. And then third, there's a new definition of innovation. It's not just a cool uh, drone or UAV that can drop a bomb halfway across the world or fly from your couch and uh, take your cat for a walk. No, it's the processes and systems behind the design that you have that are becoming the real trend. Yeah, you know, you talked about um, innovative technology and key technologies. And, and when you talked about regulatory and data and things like that, how, how are those things driving the need for innovative technology? Or how is innovative technology in the industry, you know, uh, evolving today? How is that influencing this space? To me, it's a new characteristic of innovation in the unmanned space. It's uh, the technology just keeps changing, which is great. There's so many great inventions that are rolling off uh, uh, individual cocktail napkins again, uh, chalkboards, et cetera, all over the country and all over the world. And that's wonderful. What you're really seeing, though, is a new definition of innovation. It's the kid who comes up with that innovative platform uh, with a hybrid uh, fusion-powered hydrogen engine. But he also knows uh, and uh, where that aircraft is going to fail. He knows where that engine is going to fail because he's built into it systems that monitor it. He's built in a system and a process such that he understands when that engine is going to fail in the future. So he can turn it to his customer and say, hey, I noticed your engine's got some problems because I'm feeding data off of it. Here's your complimentary engine to get, keep it on its, uh, keep it in the air rather. So not only do we have innovative technologies that are sort of forming what can be done and how it's being done, but you're saying that the reliability and the maintainability and things like that are also really innovations which are driving success in the industry. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Absolutely. It's a first. You're starting to see companies actually advertise how well they do that. And the only way they can do that is they have to integrate maintainability and reliability and data acquisition within their systems at the very beginning. And moreover, they're actually looking into their supply chains and casting that data acquisition net into that as well so that the vendors that support them can constantly innovate. So what you look at is a great platform, great technology, but an innovative, innovative ecosystem that you can sell your customers. And it says, I'm always going to support you. You're going to have a reliable product. And then just around the corner, I'm going to keep upgrading it to make it safe and more reliable. So when you turn to your investors or you turn to your regulators, you can say, look how safe my product is. And here's the data that proves it. Yeah, Stan, it's great to see you bringing, you know, 20, 30 years of technology experience into this conversation. I really appreciate that. Hey, I want to switch over and ask Aaron a couple of questions if I could. Um, Aaron, you know, you, you also come from a background of UASs and other kind of technology in this space. Hey, when we talk about technology, now you're involved also in digital technology from the software perspective. Help me understand what's happening, you know, from a technology and a software perspective in this space. How does that help enable the success of the things which Stan has told us about? 
Yeah, yeah, Stan hit some pretty good insights uh, and and hit some things right on the head, right? It related to data and and predictive data. Uh, you know, my I have a strong passion for for safety and, and managing risk and organizational safety and uh, and so there is a huge need, right, for that actionable data and that robust analysis um, needed uh, both in, internally with company and OEM and regulatory authorities, right? Um, at this point in this industry, uh, the regulatory pace uh, is needed to be driven by the, you know, the industry and not wait for the regulatory bodies to catch up, make them catch up. And so um, based on that, that insight of needing actionable data and analysis, um, historically, right, in the aviation IT industry sector, uh, there's just a lot of uh, historical siloed processes and IT infrastructures, meaning like manufacturing and engineering, uh, flight operations and logistics and supply chain, all all are maybe not touching every every aspect, have some siloed walled off areas, um, lack of data sharing is the mentality there. Um, and so technology, using data and predictive data in the future uh, is where the opportunity lies in taking that old old school aviation industry siloed processes in IT and, and, and coming out with a holistic viewpoint of it and, and starting from the beginning from scratch. Uh, like like Stan said, you know, on the napkin and the idea of having having a system be able to use that and share that data from the beginning. Yeah. Now, um, Aaron, I understand there might be as many as 300 plus companies that have, you know, entered into this space, you know, now recently. And I would imagine that either existing established companies and new companies and and they have to put systems and infrastructure in place to be able to manufacture, create, manage, maintain, you know, kind of systems. Is, is that how does Ramco play in a space a space like this? You know, I didn't tell everybody watching, but but you work for Ramco, the software company Ramco. Tell us what Ramco does and how they play in a space like this. Yeah, yeah, Ramco is positioned very nicely to fill uh, like those gaps that I've already talked about historically in the aviation sector related to IT process and infrastructure uh, because of this UAM EV tall UAS industry uh, being able to have uh, an opportunity now to kind of have a clean slate approach, meaning um, we can come in with Ramco and deploy an enterprise-wide system that can span across all those steps in the value stream, in the life cycle, right? To be able to give uh, a data repository for, for those actionable data and analysis of that data and make it shareable. So what are some of the key um, functions that the Ramco system provides. I know they provide, you know, maintenance programs and they provide, you know, uh, finance and they provide materials. And what, what are some of the key functions that a, an ERP system like that provides into a, a UAS space like this? Yeah, yeah, Ramco systems, uh, aviation defense sector that, uh, <clears throat> that we, we focus on now is built upon the well-established um, non-aviation Ramco entity uh, enterprise resource planning, uh, human resource, finance and accounting, manufacturing, supply chain. So based on those uh, large system that spans all over across the world, really, and, and many industries, um, and um, based on our already established experience in connecting OEMs and operators in the aviation industry around data sharing and business to business transactions. Um, so Stan, I want to ask you a, a follow up question to what uh, Aaron is telling us is, is it how is having a solid ERP system affect, you know, the ability to, you know, influence the investment and the regulators and the innovative technology that we've talked about? Why is it important to have a good ERP system in order to be able to support the success in those areas? From an innovator uh, uh, investment perspective, uh, showing your uh, suppliers, or rather showing your investors that you have an understanding of not only your system from a uh, manufacturing engineering perspective, when you say you're gonna produce something, it is what you're going to produce, showing that you can in fact support customers. So many UAV firms promise the world, but the deliveries never take place or they take place months afterwards. A, an importance of an ERP system is you're guaranteeing delivery, you're guaranteeing performance, you're guaranteeing reliability of the product you're producing. And you're, you're more importantly for an investor on a long-term basis, you're guaranteeing a means where you can safely introduce upgrades that your customers want because you've got the data to integrate them. You're not gonna just do something that disrupts the entire ecosystem uh, of customers. You're gonna do something they want. You're gonna use the data they provide to help provide the means to describe what the innovations you want are because your customers matter once they purchase the weapon system 
or the the UAV system rather. I'm yeah. sorry, always thinking weapon systems. <laughs> yeah. From a regulatory perspective, the very first thing they're going to ask you is data. A BV loss waiver, beyond visual line of sight waiver, uh, these days, uh, that is part and parcel with a data requirement back to the FAA. And that's real-time data. That's flight data. That's reliability data. It's what UAV system is doing. It's what everything is. Did the uh, drone stay within 100 feet of that power line? And when it did, how was it performing? Did you have any failures along the way? You have to have those data systems. If you're set, if you're doing it with spreadsheets and stubby pencils, you're never going to get the waiver. So you've got to have the data yeah. systems in order to show the regulators you're good. And when the regulators are good, your investors are happy. Yeah, Aaron, I suppose we could, you know, put every one of these things on the foundation of safety, 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 couldn't we? Oh, yeah, most definitely, right? Uh, management of risk, really. <clears throat> um, you know, safety is, a, is an easy phrase, but uh, I like to think of it as really just, you know, managing risk. Um, in aviation, right, we, we, we're not trying to eliminate the risk. Uh, if, if we were, you know, uh, the Wright brothers never would have, uh, you know, made that first step for us. So, we're trying to just manage the risk, right? Mitigate it to a, to a level that we, we can accept. And so um, using data and sharing uh, helps helps us manage that risk, at least be aware of it, right? Um, and it provides those insights to the regulatory authorities and then helps us manage it, the finances and the cost implications around that. Um, having, having historically uh, manual processes and siloed IT structures um, you know, creates uh, duplicate manual processes with some boundary walls in the organization to manage those transactions. But with Ramco uh, and a with a comprehensive and flexible aviation solution, uh, we can we can support right end to end life cycle value stream of the eVTOL, the UAS, the AAM, the UAM, um, you know, industry. Yeah, it really becomes the foundation for success of a company to be able to. Um, you know, not only have a viable company, but to be able to provide a reliable, maintainable, you know, safe product, you know, that can be operated uh, uh, in the industry. Gentlemen, yeah. it's really been really good today. I'm um, talking to you about technology and about, uh, you know, some of the key trends and things and where things are going, you know, today. Um, Stan, it was, it was really great to have your experience and your contributions and, and Aaron, your, your practical operations experience from not only from a flight, but from a digital perspective. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for uh, the conversations that we've had today. Thanks for your second, Mark. Thanks. Thank you.